There was not water right there. What is that? What is that? Oh my god, she's a giant! There we go. That feels like a good one. Oh baby. I'm blazing that stuff. Oh my gosh. That's another good one. That's a big one. Oh gosh, the giant. We're calling Jay. And welcome to the Slab Factory. <gasps> All right, guys, we're at our next spot on our quest of finding some fish out here in the draining lake. We're here underneath this interstate bridge. It's very loud. We've got tons and tons of cars passing overhead. We also have some wind kind of blowing in here. Um, there's less water here than I thought there was, but you can see there is some pretty decent pools. I've been seeing a few fish surface. Not looking too great, though. Honestly, I was hoping this would be like fully connected. Um, basically, whatever is trapped in this pool of water is what's here. I was thinking about I was going to be able to catch them on a little buzz bait or something, but I'm starting to kind of think otherwise. I might need to get some live bait or I might just need to try another spot, but we're going to toss this buzz bait around. If there is a bass or something that wants to blow up on a little bait fish imitator, it'll happen right here by these columns in this shady water. Uh, so let's make a few casts if we can get anything to blow up on it, but if not, we're going to jump over to another spot. Okay, so like I said, I got this little buzz bait right here. I've been tuning it, get it nice and squeaky. I normally use clacker buzz baits, but I got this guy squeaking pretty good. You can't hear it squeaking because it's so loud out here. And it might be better for me to have a clacking type one. I definitely feel like if there is a bass in here, they'll come up and eat it. It's not very deep. It's going to run over their heads. It's the fall of the year. Bass are looking to feed up on some bait fish. And right now, these bass are trying to feed up on anything that they can find to survive. Definitely think there's a couple of bass in this pool, but it's hard to say. This spot gets fished a lot. Could be fished out. And there is the chance there could just be nothing here. Shouldn't take too long to find out. I have some other baits in the car, but if they don't eat a buzz bait right here, then I'll probably just go somewhere else. Feels good under here at least. Busted. Bust. Busted. Nah. Yes, look at that. That is a giant diamondback. And I think he's eating something. I'm gonna go on ahead and grab him before he gets away. Oh, he's so big. Where's his head? Oh my god, he's a giant! Oh my gosh, he's got a big old shed. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this diamond bag, guys. Look at this, he's eating a huge gizzard shed. Look at that. He is eating a humongous gizzard shed, or trying to. Wow, what a monster. Oh, he almost bit me in the face. Wow. That is an enormous snake, guys. I mean, that is an enormous diamond bag. Got him. An enormous diamondback water snake. I feel kind of bad because he was eating that shad, but I had to see how big he was because he is huge. Let me prop my camera up so you can see him. Guys, look at the absolutely massive size of this diamondback water snake. I can't believe it. I looked down in the water, saw that shad kind of spiraling around, and noticed there was a dark blotch on it, like something had a halt of it. I couldn't tell for sure, but then all of a sudden it popped up, and it was this big diamondback trying to eat it. That's a huge gizzard shad. I feel kind of bad because I feel like I took his meal away, but I'm going to toss it back out there um, in the water and put him back in the same place so he can go get it again. But honestly, I think that, I think that shaft's too big. But who knows? These snakes have surprised me before. I've seen him eating big old catfish. But again, look at the size of that snake. He is massive. Luckily, we didn't get a bite from him. You can see the diamondback patterns on his back. He's probably three and a half foot long or so. Really, really nice snake. Being quite chill in the hand now. He was really rowdy and grumpy at first. Um, but you'll have that when you get snatched out of a big old pool of water. With the big old shad in your mouth, he was, he was quite defenseless. 
but wow, that is incredible. Love catching these guys, love seeing them out here, out here eating what's left out here in these pools of water. It's a great place for these snakes to forage and look for um, fish. It's easy for them to catch them. Again, yeah, just beautiful diamondback water snake. Very calm now. He musked a lot at first. I don't think he got on me. Should be able to handle him very gently now. Oh, don't get grumpy. Yeah, that thing bigger than my arm. <laughs> what a cool snake. He's got some sort of weird lesion on his side. Looks like, it's looked like, looks like he had some sort of infection. Healed up nicely, but aside from that, not a blemish on him. Absolutely incredible. Okay, I'm gonna send it back. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, big guy. You are free. Where's his shad? Guys, look at the size of this shad he was trying to eat. That's a big gizzard. That's a lot of body that snake had to his mouth around. But I'm going to toss it back in here. He'll definitely find it again. So I'm not worried about the snake's well-being and if it's going to eat or not. He can find that shad. There's a lot of fish in here you can eat. But man, that was pretty crazy. Anytime an opportunity like that presents itself to me, you know I'm going to take it. You know I'm going to grab those big diamond backs. But okay, let's, uh, let's leave this spot. We're not catching any fish here. And let's see if we can find some fish elsewhere. We're here at the next spot. It's just as loud right now. We got a train going over the bridge. I think that's always cool. But we're just gonna walk this creek. I haven't fished here in a while. Last time I was here, I was in a kayak. Uh, it's actually just upstream of where I started at. But we're gonna see if we can't find a few shade pockets, find some stumps, find some fish. Found a fishing pole. Heck yeah. So what I've been having to come to grips with recently is that uh, this lake is just about 100% dead. I would say that it is 90 to 95% dead. Uh, there's just no water and um, the majority of the fish died. Some of them, I'm sure, got out of the lake through the dam or through these little spillway tunnels and stuff. But as far as like, you know, all these little backwater, little nooks and crannies, these little hidey holes um, that I've been fishing, you know, I'm just seeing less and less and less fish. And that m mostly has to do with just them dying. Um, and also being harvested, but the majority of them just, just dying. I fished up this creek as far as I could go. Didn't really see anything, didn't catch anything. It looks very dead. And that's kind of been how it is in most of these spots. Um, there are a few holes that have a little bit more water that emptied, um, you know, not as soon as some of these other ones that are still holding a lot of fish, but the majority of them are rough fish. Most of them are bowfin, gar, buffalo, just a few bass, probably some, uh, some bullheads and channel cats. But yeah, it, it, it sucks. I was really hoping that, um, you know, we'd be able to get through the summertime, maybe get a few extra rains, keep a little bit of extra water in the lake, keep some fish in the lake, so that we could get back after it this fall and winter when we get some more rains and that and that there would actually be some fish to catch but it doesn't appear that that's going to be the case i could be wrong but it doesn't seem like that's the case because when we do get these big rains in the future it will fill the lake back up um but there won't be any fish to uh, disperse with the rising water i'm afraid or if there's just not enough fish that you will actually be able to really target them there's going to be just you know one here one there so days are numbered you know, being able to come out here and catch some fish. I've got a couple of spots that I think are going to hold fish for a while. But even that, you know, it's very, very small areas. And uh, it sucks. But I'm not going to be defeated. We're going to find some fish. I can go back to some of these other areas that I know have a few fish in them and catch some fish. But as far as this area, I think it's toast. And I've just been slowly checking off spots 
day by day, which ones have fish in them, which ones don't have fish in them, which ones are done, and I'm pretty certain I can mark this one off as toast. All right, we're doing it to it. Last spot we're gonna check today, and I know for a fact that there are some fish in this area. Uh, I haven't been in here in a week and a half or so, um, but the last time I was here, we caught them pretty good. We're gonna mix things up. I've been throwing a lot of Texas rig plastics recently, um, trying to catch these fish, you know, the six inch hog walla, the Congo crawl. Today, we're really mixing it up. We got a little white spinner bait, and what's funny is that I actually found this spinner bait out here on the bank. Um, it's also a really nice spinner bait. This is like a $17, $18 spinner bait. It's a mega bass one. So somebody was out here living that bougie life, throwing them high quality spinner baits, and then they just left it on the bank. Or they lost it, but it looked like they just like cut it off and left it on the bank. Anyways, I've got it now, and I'm gonna try to catch the fish with it. The creek looks really stanky right here. Look at that. Like that looks real stanky. But the main reason I've got the spinnerbait on is that I want to cover some water. I've only got like an hour and a half that I can actually fish. The rest of this afternoon, I got some stuff I gotta do this afternoon. Um, but I'm thinking that we can cover some water with this bait. We're gonna be showing them something different also. We've been showing them plastics, you know, over and over and over again. So I think that this should mix things up. And I think it'll actually excite them to see a little spinnerbait coming through the water column. Hopefully they can see it's a white one. Usually white works pretty good. I wish I had like some Colorado or Indiana blades to get a little bit of extra vibration, but those willows should be fine. Wish they were gold, but like I said, it'd probably be fine. But let's get up here to an area where the water's not super scummy. Let's see, we can't find a couple of fish. We haven't caught anything yet today. Got it. Oh, I hate doing that. That's probably my pet peeves, just watch people do that, but it was necessary just then. <laughs> oh. All right, let's keep going. We're still looking for our first fish on the spinner bait. Time is running out on this thing. Had a couple of followers just now. There's one. Well, my SD card filled up just as I landed this little guy. First fish of the day is a beautiful little largemouth on a spinner bait. I just had a couple of bigger fish swirl after. I don't know if they were largemouth or something different. One thing about spinner bait is it will catch just about anything. Maybe we're finally getting into some good spinner bait water. There's not as much leaves as or as many leaves. So I'm feeling good about not getting snagged up. Except when you make a cast like that. But let's move up here to this next pool. It looks a little bit fishier. It has been historically fishier. Oh, something smacked it right there. I missed him. Right underneath my feet. Got another one. I don't think this is what bit it a second ago. The other thing felt much larger and made a big swirl. But there we go. Second fish of the day is another little bass on the spinnerbait. I guess we just had to get up here. It's better spinnerbait water. Not a monster. Toss him back in right there. Starting to get some action though. Usually when I'm throwing a spinnerbait, I'm throwing something double the size of this one. There we go. We're on him now, baby. Smaller fish. Really haven't been catching fish this size. I've been catching fish a little bit bigger out here on that plastic. There we go. It's another nice little creek LMB. Little fatty. That's three just right here in the last 20 yards. Definitely not as many leaves over here, but I've been still being pretty good about finding them. I'm trying to weave my line. There we go. Better fish. Better fish. I bit it as soon as it hit the water. Is it another bass? Another good one. This little spinner bait is killing it. Whoever left this thing on the bank is gonna be disappointed. Cause I'm catching them with it. <laughs> there we go. 
four bass and try to keep count of how many I catch. I need to bring my scale so I can weigh them if I get any big ones. I'm still on the quest to catch a five pounder out of this hole since everything's been drained down. Got him. Another nice one. Got him. These little bass are loving that spinner bait. Number five. We got a five bass limit for five pounds and four ounces. Just got to kind of poke and hope. Trying to let the bait sink down. There we go. Biggin. Biggin. That bass is big. It's a biggin. It is a biggin. Oh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that one. That's a stud. I was trying to say that I've been letting the bait sink down so that it doesn't snag the leaves as quickly. That's a good one. Down there's probably two and three quarter. I mean, what a stud. Thing's beautiful. Got him right in the corner of the mouth. This is a nice little spinner bait. Got a small hook. It's compact, it's finesse. And these swamp bass like it. Maybe I should have thrown the spinner bait at the other spots I checked earlier. Might would have got us something. Even though I truthfully think those other spots that I checked are about dead. Because I wasn't even seeing any like bait fish or minnows or shad or nothing. Oh, he tried to get it. He got it. He got it. There we go, another decent one. I just had two fish come out and try to get this thing just then. He's got some stuff going on at the back half. Look at that. Yeah, he's got some red. Not bad. That's our second biggest, I think. Oh, dang, I lost count. Is that seven or is that eight? Oh, man. Let me know, guys. Comment below. How many fish have I caught? Seven, eight, and how many do you think I'm going to catch? Because I'm about to come up here into the best spot. Like the best spot where I think it could really go down. I kind of feel like I could maybe get to 15. What time is it? It's 4.15. I was going to fish until 5.30, so I got an hour and 15 minutes. i kind of been booking it. So this rod that I'm using is a Six Sense Lux Series rod. It's a 7 foot 1 medium heavy fast action, just a general all-purpose rod. If I was recommending, you know, one rod, if you can only get one rod, you go on the Six Sense Fishing website and get one, I'd recommend this one. This thing you can do just about anything with. You can throw a spinner bait. You can throw a buzz bait. You can throw a Texas rig. You can throw a jig. You can throw a swim bait on a jig head. You can throw like a square bill crank bait. I've even thrown jerk baits on it. Like you can literally do whatever you want to with this rod. Is it the best at every application? No. Is it extra proficient at, at all those applications I just mentioned? Yes. You can even put some braid on here and throw a frog or a swim jig. Like I really like it. Can't recommend it enough for, you know, just a good budget friendly, seven foot medium heavy. I'll leave a link down below. Everything is six cents fishing. When you use the link, it'll save you some money and help support us on all of our fishing adventures. Now, if we don't catch them right here in front of the stump, I'm either gonna go home or I'm just gonna be really sad. I'm not going home. I'll probably just be really sad. This looks gypsy and it's not super leafy. <gasps> Snagged, saved it, still got a chance. Oh, something's chasing it. Told you. <laughs> I saw some fish swirling right there. Boom. Seven foot medium heavy. Did him dirty on the spinner bait. I knew I was gonna catch one. I got kind of scared for a second because I got snagged. That's no nice one. If I don't have 10 yet, this should be number 10. Next fish I catch, I'm gonna say it's number 11. <laughs> Even though it could easily be 12 at this point. That's a big one. Oh gosh, the giant. Oh my gosh. Oh, he threw it. Oh no, that was a four pounder. Oh no, that was a four pounder. Might have been a four and a half pounder. What a great spot. There's a little beaver ditch right there in the shade. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was a giant. That hurts. 
I even got a good hook set into him too. Dang, he was trying to go to these three stumps right here and I was just turning him and he just threw it. Dang, gum it. Oh no, heartbreaker. That's a fish I haven't messed around with yet out here. Dang, that was a big one. I was hoping the spinnerbait would maybe get a bigger bite and that was definitely it. Oh, one. He's running fast. Is he big? Is he big? Is he big? He's big. He's big. He is big. He is big. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Let's go. Yes. Yo, whenever they're running fast like that, they're either two things. A nicer one or a bow fin. I was kind of hoping for the latter. But I'm kind of scared of the bow fin because they got teeth and they'll bite this bait off. And I'm really vibing with it right now. Another good one. Two and a halfer. Two and a halfer? I knew this bait. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Let's go. So I'm sure y'all can see, you know, whenever I'm working the spinner bait, I'm not just casting it out and reeling it in. I'm imparting secondary action into it. You know, I'm pumping the rod. I'm giving it some good handle cranks. I'm trying to get those blades to flutter and get that skirt to pulsate. You know, I'm also, you know, letting it drop and lifting it up kind of off the bottom a little bit. And I think that imparting that secondary action is just really, really crucial if you're trying to get some extra bites on the spinnerbait. There's so many people that do just simply just cast it out there and wind it in. And um, a lot of times you'll have fish and they'll be following your bait and they're just kind of following at that steady pace. And it, what, I mean, it'll take you snapping that bait or getting those blades to engage a little bit faster to get that bite. Pretty much every bite that I've gotten today has been after some sort of reaction, whether it's like the reaction of the bait going into the water, me giving a good handle crank, me giving a couple pump pumps. But yeah, that's sick. What's not sick is how scummy the water looks right here. Oh, that was a big fish. I'm just gonna throw in there anyways. Oh, there was, we got a little bit of moving water. It hasn't rained, I don't think. No, the water's moving now. Unless that dam's just breaking down. Yeah, so here's the deal. We got this beaver dam right here. They got, it's holding all this water, which is, honestly kind of nice um it was a really big dam but the current kind of busted it out but yeah i appreciate the beavers for for doing that and holding some water there's actually four or five different little beaver dams on this thing and that's the only reason why there is as much water as there is right now oh something's coming to get me he got it he's coming what is that another bass he knocked the slack out of it. I saw a huge swirl coming. Didn't know what it was gonna be. It's another nice bass. Quality is definitely improving down here. And the quality overall is not bad on the spinnerbait. The spinnerbait is traditionally well known for being a numbers and size bait. I've caught some monster bass. Some of the biggest bass I've ever caught have been on a spinnerbait. And uh, we had the shot at that big one just a moment ago. Oh no, but we're safe. I'm trying to work my bait down to keep it out of these leaves, but I'm also risking getting hung up on crap on the bottom. So we're going to find a happy medium. This has been a fun adventure. I'm loving the action. I spent a significantly longer amount of time at the other areas and didn't have any luck. Oh, he smoked it. Dang, I knew I was about to catch one there. Kind of got me in between. Come back for it. Back. Yeah, he came back for it. Definitely the same fish. Looks just like him. Got him. There's a juicy log running across that thing. And I was like, man, if I could roll that thing over the top of that thing, there was no um, cypress needles in the way or leaves. I knew that there should be one there. And he was. He's got a weird dorsal fin. Look at that. Beauty. Peace, amigo. There we go. That feels like a good one. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That's a good one. Look at that. He chomped it. No short striking at that time. Finally got one to come back clean. Look at that. He got some red lips. You got any holes in his mouth? It's kind of what I'm looking for now. See if these fish got holes in their mouth. It kind of helps me uh, figure out what the population is. This, this one here does not have any holes in his mouth. I think it'd be fun to tag them. <laughs> I wonder if I could tag them. I might look into seeing if I can tag these fish. 
just to see. Nice one, another two pounder. Another log running across the creek right there. I said I wanted just one more to end on, but I kind of want to go around this corner too. There's another one. Is he still on there? He is still on there. Is he big? He's not small, is he a bass? Oh, snap. Oh, snap. He went through a bunch of crap. And now he's on the bank. Whew, this spinnerbait is putting in some work. That might be our biggest as far as longest. I don't know, he's got a hole. <laughs> he's got a hole, I think. Actually, no, it's not a hole. He does not have a hole. Good one. Another really nice one, guys. Two and a half. Big old head. He's like probably 18 inches. Just a little lean. Mmm. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Another good one. Oh, yeah. Another one. Another two pounder. Another two pounder. I'm getting some redemption because the last time I was out here, I was actually fishing a 1v1 tournament with my boy Frost in Austin. So I haven't seen that video. I also uh, grabbed a cotton mouth on accident. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave that video linked. But we fished a 1v1 tournament, any species counts. I ended up winning that tournament, but I lost so many fish. I did not have the right setup. We did a budget challenge, Academy versus Dick Sporting Goods. $20 budget and I bought these lead weights and they were kind of like jagged and I think that they were the root cause of my line breaking on like every hook set it felt like I lost some good ones so for me this is like redemption tour because we are definitely catching more than we're missing oh my gosh another good one these are some good ones right here guys another good one we're catching way more than we are missing even though we missed our biggest one, but that's okay. That just kept us humble. Do you have any holes in your mouth? Don't see any holes. It's another good one, guys. Smashing on them right here in this little pocket. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of focusing on a different section of the creek as far as like, not, not a different section of the creek, but a different um, area within the creek. Because primarily I've just been throwing you know, at these stumps, you know, pitching my soft plastics to to cover, catching the fish that are hanging out on it. I haven't really been fishing for the fish that are just kind of chilling in the middle of the channel, and the spinnerbait allows me to do both, actually. I can throw it right by this little stump. And that was three good ones right here in this little bend. Oh, I just missed. I just missed. My blaze messed up. Oh my gosh. That's another good one. That's a big one. Oh my gosh, another big one. Another big one. Is that the biggest one? Is that the biggest one? I think that's the biggest one. I don't know. I've caught several this size. Look at that one. Golly, I wish I had the scale. We'd be having a bag. We'd be having a bag. Oh man, we'd have almost like 15 pounds probably. Cause that's a three. It's a three all day. Look at that beautiful fish. A beauty. They are stacked. I should probably retie. If I get this thing in without <laughs> breaking it off, I'm gonna retie real quick. Yo, this spinner bait is killing. Me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's another pig. It's another pig. I'm definitely retiring now. Dude, I had I had no idea it was gonna be this good. I had no idea. <laughs> this is legendary. Look at that, another one. I don't see any big holes in his mouth. That's awesome. That is awesome. This is one of my favorite tools. It's super underrated. I gave a shout out to this little, I think it's a boomerang little line snipper tool. This is one that you can get at Crappie Magnet. Dot com. I have it attached to my GoPro strap. You could put it on your belt. You could throw it in your pocket. Just throw it in your tackle box. 
but it's just awesome to have something that I can just easily cut my line with. It cuts braid, cuts mono, cuts, cuts fluoro, but definitely want to retie. I've rubbed this thing up against enough logs and caught enough fish and had them rough up this bait that I don't want to lose it. So I just tied a little Palomar knot right there. And also, like, I'm at the point in my life where I've bitten enough line, and I, I know I'm going to bite line in the future, but I've bitten enough line that uh, my my days are numbered before I bite line and break my teeth. I don't want to do that. So I try to always have some sort of line snipping tool and then only use the teeth in emergencies. Now, the water's up a little bit. I don't understand how it's up. It has not rained. Unless it did rain and I'm just stupid, but I don't think it rained. I've been paying attention. That could be fish. It is. He's on there still. He's running so fast. Be big. Yes. Yes. Mm, don't you love it when you just know? Like you got him dialed in and you just know you're going to catch one. Makes you never want to leave. He's got some stuff on him too. A lot of these fish have got some little abscesses and little scars on them. It's interesting. It's another two and a half. I'm begging. Okay. Well, we wanted one more. Now we want two more. I'm being greedy. We're already here. I think I got like 10 minutes left that I can fish. Because there was. Oh, there was not water out there. What is that? What is that? What is that? Oh, toothy critter. Don't break my bait. Toothy critter. We did it. We did it. Toothy critter. Ow. Oh, gosh, he got me. Well, there's my bow fin. He's about to skedaddle. Woo. That was cool. Caught him right out of those cypress knees. Oh my gosh, there we go. There we go. Right underneath my feet. I've been waiting for that bite all day. I had one earlier. Start the video off. Bit me right underneath my feet. And I missed him. Got a little redemption on that too. Heck yeah. Not a monster, but a good one to end on. Good little 14 inch stocky little swamp bass. On a spinnerbait. Right underneath the feet. That was sick. Okay, we're going to send him back and we're going to hike on out of here. We got to go. We got to go. I got Big Boss calling me means I got to go make one more cast just one more cast oh my gosh I am the luckiest guy in the world okay now we gotta go <laughs> I was like I gotta cast that back of that tree I'm already here okay that that's when you know you're having a good day right there guys okay we're gonna send this one back and get on out of here okay well it turns out Spinnerbait was a premier choice for this creek. I knew it would be deadly. I've had so many fish that I've caught whenever I was swimming a plastic. Um, I knew that they would eat some moving bait in general. I just haven't, hadn't done it yet. And I think it's pretty crazy that we made it through the whole day without uh, getting hung up to where we had to snap it off or uh, getting bit off by like a pickerel, a gar, or a bowfin. We did get that one bowfin at the end, which was pretty cool, but I could not believe how many bass we caught. Once we got back, once we kind of got back to that good area with a little bit deeper water and away from the leaves i don't know how many i caught hopefully y'all were keeping count i think we got to 20 to be honest with y'all we might even got to 23 or 24 but um yeah i'm hiking back i've been walking for a little while it is definitely a walk to get back there but definitely seems to always be worth it at least for now especially since it is like one of the last places where i'm able to catch fish out of this lake uh this once lake now we're just back here in the creek but anyways, I'm heading back. Thanks for putting up with me. Had a lot of fun fishing today. Started off kind of slow. We caught that big snake. It was tight. The first couple of fishing spots were not tight. They were not good. But we managed to put together a really solid afternoon catch some good fish. And we hooked up with that big old like four to four and a half pounder. So it's nice to know that there are still some giants living in this creek. But again, thank y'all so much for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. You know, our analytics show that more than half of y'all that watch our videos aren't already subscribed. So if y'all could go the extra mile, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed, we would greatly appreciate it. 
mean the world to us. But with that, I'm almost back here to my truck. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye guys.